And welcome in here to It's Just That Simple. I'm Bill DeFoy, joined by my co-host, Michelle Wilson, and we're here to talk about resolutions for the new year. And Michelle, I've been telling you that I only make one resolution every single year, and it's this. Not to make any more resolutions than this one. And I guarantee it works every single time. There is no deviation, and I can say at the end of the year, by golly, big toe and holy socks, I have kept my resolution. And so we're here today to talk about resolutions and three simple ways to maintain those resolutions. Well, I'm really excited to be here today with you and talk about resolutions. Um, you know, it's about 45% of Americans set resolutions every year. Um, however, we found that only 8% attain them are able to attain them. So sometimes, you know, I say, well, resolutions don't really work. But I believe that they do work if you really follow these three simple steps that we're going to talk about today. All right. Without further ado, step number one for the new year, 2016. Self-awareness. I believe that self-awareness, knowing where you're at first and then knowing where you want to go, and also just knowing your weaknesses and your strengths, helps you identify, you know, the type of goals that you want to achieve. So I really believe self-awareness. And one way, how do you become more self-aware is through personal development. I believe in personal development because it helps you to identify your strengths and weaknesses. Now, I have before me a sheet of paper. If I were to sit here and draw a line down the middle, I could put here strengths and weaknesses and list out each of those on both sides of the ledger. The strengths... You know, we can easily identify those weaknesses. We're going to have a little tougher time, but it's, you know, really making lemonade out of the lemons and making those weaknesses our strengths. You're absolutely right. You know, I always say that change really starts with you, and change is difficult. And um, identifying your strengths, even actually if you, you work on your strengths, can help you with your weaknesses also. But identifying your weaknesses and knowing um, where your, your kind of your soft spot is, I think is really important to being, you know, really self-aware. And I think working on both your strengths and your weaknesses, you're able to achieve the, you know, your resolutions or the goals that you want to set for yourself. How difficult is it to identify those weaknesses? It can be very difficult if you've never done it before. Um, but, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, a muscle. You know, the more you do it, the easier it gets. So, you know, if you're doing it for the very first time, you may want to get a, a coach or work with someone. Um, I, I do masterminds and all sorts of ways you can, you can learn how to, to uh, identify your strengths and weaknesses. Um, personal development, there's tons of books out there about, you know, just really developing yourself and identifying your skills and really learning how to work on the, those weaknesses. How difficult is it for a person to change? You know what? It starts with wanting to change. And I don't think it's, it. I don't really think it's that difficult if you want to change. You've got to really want to change and seek the help that you, you know, if you can't do it on your own, then seek the help to change. Um, I find, because I work with a, a teams and so forth like that, you know, they say they want it, but uh, change, it takes work. You know, and um, being coachable, I think, is really important. Being very coachable. And being open to possibilities. Open to possibilities. Um, Albert Einstein, he says, you know, there, to solve a problem, you can't use the same thinking that got us there. <laughs> so you have to realize you have to change your thinking. In order to do that, you either read the books or go out there and get some help, you know. But it's really about change, and that's what's more difficult, and it's really gets down to resolutions means resolve. Resolving that you want to make a change. And it can become easier, but you just really got to be open-minded. You know, I was thinking about the definition of insanity, which is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And that's never going to happen. That is never going to happen. Like I said, if it got you, you know, what got you there is not going to what's going to get you out. So you really have to make an effort to, to change, you know. You know, I think of two scenarios. I think of that individual that wants to lose weight, but if they're not eating healthy and making poor choices, uh, they're not going to lose the weight, and they're going to contribute to uh, them perhaps being unhealthy, maybe obese, uh, and having all kinds of health-related issues. The other one would be somebody who smokes. Now, I've never been a smoker. 
I don't like it. I don't. Uh, it's disgusting to me, but that's a personal opinion. Um, but those that fall into those two categories, if they don't, <clears throat> excuse me, don't want to make the change, they're never going to lay down that cigarette. They're not going to lay down that, you know, piece of pie or cake or whatever. And you know, actually, that's my second tip: is you got to identify the habits. So those are habits that people have created that they're, they actually become unconscious. There's things that they do over and over and over, not realizing that they're doing. So first, they got to you know sec be self-aware, and then determine what the habits, what those habits are. So with the overeating, you know, what's is it something that's triggering them? You know, what is it that's creating them to overeat? So identifying the habit and then creating better habits that will help them achieve their goals. So that's really the second tip is really identifying that we all have these habits, good or bad, and it's the habits we have to change that will, you know, achieve to get us to the goals that we want. I, I would imagine that with an unhealthy eater, perhaps stress, perhaps it's a lifestyle that they have developed over years. I remember as a kid, I developed eating as, as a habit at, at a very early age, but it's a matter of making healthy choices. Absolutely. I mean, I, that's actually, like I said, is one of my goals this year. And, you know, eating is, is you know, like I said, out of overstressed, um, sweet sometimes, you know. So just now that I identify that, okay, this is going to trigger me, then, okay, I've got to make the second choice. It's all in a split second, you know. And once you make those choices, like I said, it's a daily choice, you know, over and over. And, hey, you may slip up, but you know what? Just start back over again. And uh, eventually, you know, habits do change. And I always say don't get rid of the bad habit. Just replace them with good habits. I think it's easier when you identify the, the habit that you want to achieve just work on that habit, and we'll actually replace the old habit. Well, I know in your particular case, you favor three different restaurants, and we've been to two of those three, and they're all, you know, the two that we've been to, very healthy choices when you walk in. Absolutely. You know, I, I love to eat. <laughs> but, oh, you know, just make, yeah, I love to eat, but just making those healthy choices, you know, and when you start eating healthy, Actually, it starts tasting very good. So, I mean, it's just really, it's all about choices, you know. And every now and then, hey, I might, you know, slip a little bit. But I just, you know, try to make 99, 95% of, of healthy choices. Well, that's good because, you know, in effect, you're, you know, teaching your children, uh, especially you have a young boy in the house. And you're teaching him to develop good eating habits as well. Yes. He'll, he'll tell you in a minute that I don't like sweets. You know, his um, snack of choice is broccoli and spinach. So it is amazing when you teach good habits that your kids will, will uh, learn them also. <laughs> I'm going to have a long talk with you, Joel. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, you know, I'm, and I'm glad that you're making those um, choices available and introducing them as good choices and that he would favor those as, a, as opposed to a chocolate chip cookie. Not to say he doesn't like them, but uh, he would favor a, a healthy snack. Yeah, it's funny when we're out sometimes and people are like, oh, he doesn't like chocolate chip cookies. I'm like, no, he doesn't like chocolate chip cookies, you know. But I think it's just, it's a habit that he has developed and created. And so that's, it's sticking with him. Very good. Well, listen, let's summarize again. You had three basic um, things that people can do to help them keep their resolution. So again, what was number one? So the first one was self-awareness. And then two was really identifying the habits, you know, your good habits and your bad habits. And three, I don't really say we talked about it, but really writing it down. I think that's really important. So writing down your resolution and writing down the goals um, because it makes it more concrete. And then, you know, creating a plan and then how you're going to execute it. But, you know, I mentioned before, I've got a sheet of paper here. It's a matter of taking that sheet of paper Drawing that line down, pros, cons, good, bad, weak, uh, strengths, weaknesses, and then being able to work on those weaknesses and shifting them to your strengths. Absolutely. That's, you knocked it right on the, the button. <laughs> knocked it out of the park. The button, yes, out of the park, yeah. Well, there you go. Well, Michelle, I'm, I'm thankful that we're off to a good start in 2016. Happy New Year to you. And if people wanted to uh, get a hold of you, how would they go about doing it? Well, you can contact me by phone, which is 805-304-5088. And then also you can email me. It's michelle 
at michelleainternational.com. Wonderful. So again, we've got the contact information. Michelle, we look forward to our next time together on It's Just That Simple. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you. And thank you for joining us. And join us next time here on It's Just That Simple, a production of the Heritage Media Group.